We're mounting a 50 inch force trolling motor on a 521 Ranger and we're just setting up on where the mount needs to be. We need to make sure that the bumper is off of the bow by about an inch and a half or so. And then you just kind of want to go down this side here so that the trolling motor is not pushing off of the side when you have it stowed. But most importantly, is don't run these screws in until you get the strap under the mount. I can't tell you how many people mount this thing on here and forget to put the strap under the mount. And you gotta pull it all back off to do that. So be really cautious about getting this strap under here. And the buckle goes out. Okay, we got our first hole drilled. I like to set that with one of our quarter inch bolts and then I like to drill the exact opposite bolt and that will just help keep the bracket square while I finish up the other, uh, the other four or five holes. Whenever you're actually mounting this bracket to the deck, you need to alternate your bolt pattern just like you would on your tires. That ensures that the bracket comes down nice and flat. So we started with this one. We've got this one sunk down. Now I'm gonna alternate to the other side of the bracket and hit this screw to suck that side down. I'm gonna go up here and make sure that the front gets sucked down and then alternate back to this side and then finish on this back right screw. And the bracket should come down nice and flat and this uh, inside mechanism will, will slide in and out perfectly. The next step is to actually mount the trolling motor to the bracket. We're gonna route our pull cable through the trolling motor before we put the pins on and line up our lower pin on the servo and the bracket. And it's important to push this pin in by hand without hammers or tools. Okay, now we'll pull the trolling motor up and we'll install our lift assist springs on the top and on the bottom. So now we'll put our top of the bracket on and our top pin on. Before we secure this pin, I like to hook up my E-box to the servo. Now we'll route our transducer cable and our power cable through the cable channel of the bracket. Now we're uh, installing the cable tie bracket. We've got a loop set for our flex of the bracket. The next step is going to be to add an additional hole down here in the tub for additional cables, live scope and trolling motor cable and transducer cable. All that's got to feed through here and get into the bow. We're fixing to mount the LVS32 that's the live scope transducer. And <clears throat> if you look at the mountain bracket, there's two arrows and it tells you which way is up. You have to follow those directions. It's not an option not to. So the purpose of that seven degree angle is so that this array, this array, and this array can actually look to the side of the trolling motor. If you angle that the opposite direction, then it actually shoots the arrays right into your trolling motor. So you don't see anything at all. And, and if you're not seeing anything and you're complaining about not seeing anything, the first thing you'd wanna look at is that angle right there is seven degrees. And if you pull the bottom side of the mount off and just look at it, it has arrows and says up. So that up means up. That's got to go like that. The next thing is you will want to decide where on this shaft you want this thing or motor, whichever the case may be. With this one, the strap is, is just in front of the, the clearance cut here. So I don't want to put it down right next to the motor on this particular one. However, if the strap was up here, I could put it down here and it will still look past the motor. But with this one, the strap's a little bit lower. So I'm actually gonna put it right here so it doesn't impede his ability to use the strap. I want the arrays to be parallel with the side of the motor. This is an array, this is an array, and this is an array. The side of the motor needs to be parallel with these. So if you just 
take a target of the side of the motor and place it right with this edge or right with this edge, these, these sides need to be parallel to the motor. So we're fixing to attach the cable to the shaft and run it up the shaft. And we don't use any zip ties on this cable. We tape all of this cable. It's important to leave a little slack here, right where the cable comes into the transducer. This is called the strain relief, and you do not want to pull the strain relief from the housing. So that's what he's talking about there. You got to leave that bend in there so you're not pulling on that strain relief. The solder joints are right inside that strain relief. All right, so we've got it secured to the shaft. Now we need to leave a little bit of loop for the actual turning of the trolling motor. We want to secure this cable to our bracket so that it won't get pinched when the patrol motor is deployed. Uh, so I like to leave uh, about a three inch radius loop there and secure it right to our uh, stabilizer mount bracket. I will use zip tie here, but I, I keep the zip tie very loose to just keep it in the general area, not really tight. This is your cable track and your 12 pin transducer runs through that, comes out this end. We do actually run a zip tie at both ends of this to pull those cables together. And then we just loop the cables here on a Ranger, put a little loop in it here, a little loop in it here, and that's what gets us into the bow area. And that's real clean. The trailer motor will deploy or stow and the cables stay out of harm's way. So we're testing the power to the trolling motor, foot pedal, remote, and then we're gonna pair them. We turn the breaker on on the boat, the trolling motor beeped, that tells us that we've got power and we got three green lights. So the remote control is also powered up and it's ready to respond. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the power key three times and the pairing light will turn blue. Okay, I popped the second battery in it, and then I pushed and hold the anchor lock, and now it's paired. Okay, now all I'm doing there is just testing to be sure it's turning, and then I hit the speed dial, and it indicates that the speed is turning up. You do have to hold the trolling motor over to have the foot pedal respond to it. There's a safety feature in it that it won't allow that to work until it comes over. So it's all paired now.